even though the Aneurygnathid fluff seemed to fit a couple different morphotypes of dinosaur protofeathers, there were still differences in form suggesting differences in development. The branched fluff of Aneurygnathids has branches of many different lengths, meaning that they could have grown irregularly. They didn't have to be laid down in an orderly fashion the way that bird feather barbs are inside the follicle. So unless we found fluffy pterosaur structures that were definitely not artifacts, that were branched along most of their length, and that had very regular barbs, the evidence was still pretty ambiguous as to aha! Chincota and just so many co-authors described these little branched feathers on the back of a crest of Tupandactylus from Brazil. The barbs are consistent in length and spread out along the length of the shaft. The specimen preserves these towards the tip of the crest, as well as longer simple filaments closer in, and long straight structural fibrils in the membrane sail part of the head crest. So we have different protofeathers in different zones. They can't just be overlapping because there are individual branched feathers preserved. They can't just be decayed actinofibrils because there are fibrils in the head membrane preserved. Why would they decay there and not over here? Those little branched ones are a match for a certain feather that we find in, for example, Sinosauropteryx or Sinornithosaurus. This is called a radially branched shafted filamentous feather, which is a mouthful. The authors just call all of Tupandactylus's integumentary structures feathers, and if you can't tell, I am 100% on board with that. 